What is your potential? No, don't worry. This is not going to be a talk about how to find your inner self and how to reach your full potential. Quite the contrary, in fact. My talk starts back in 2013, as I was traveling through Asia together with my study mate, Florian. One of the highlights of the trip certainly was Vietnam, as in Vietnam, we spontaneously decided to continue our trip on motorbikes from there onwards. The two of us, being office guys and total pen pushers, with zero knowledge about motorbikes or mechanics, we not only had to buy two motorbikes, but also two fake licenses, <laughs> as one does. Said and done, we started on our shaky bikes on an early morning in Ho Chi Minh City, and we dove into the traffic of Vietnam, where 21 people die every day. So this was much to the delight of our mothers at home. Soon after, however, we left the busy city roads and we started to explore the back country of Vietnam, the high mountain passes and the beautiful valleys. Unfortunately, more often than not, uh, our bikes would break down as they were cheap copies from China, either under the heavy rain or any other defect that urged us to stop at the local mechanic and ask for his help fixing our bikes. However, being in the back country of Vietnam, nobody speaks English or Spanish. If you're lucky enough, you find one or two words of French, back from the colonialism, that are understood. Forget about telephone or internet reception and forget about your translator app, understanding the local dialect or vice versa. What works much better than words, however, are drawings. Drawings, symbols, icons of what you need of what you need for yourself, what you need to know, or what you need for your bike. So we started drawing, and we started drawing symbols and icons for what we needed to know, or what spare part we needed to have for our motorbike. And we soon realized that we kept using the same icons day after day, and one evening at the campfire, together with some rice wine, the idea was born. Let's just put all necessary icons for travelers <laughs> on a T-shirt so that they can speak to everybody, everywhere. We put that idea to rest, however, for two years, as we were both busy studying and traveling and what one does. Only in 2016, we came together again and we finally created that product. We created an online shop called iconspeak.world, because now I can speak to the world. Soon after, we were published by an Australian blog, and what hap happened afterwards, of course, is history. In the spring of 2016, we were captured by a viral sensation, and we were at the hype of all news and social media. We went from half an order per week to six, seven, eight orders per minute. We were generating customers from more than 80 countries, generating thousands of backlinks from all over the world, from news companies and radio stations, and we were giving multiple interviews per day to the likes of CNN or National Geographic. All this within a matter of weeks and with zero marketing spending. At one point, PayPal was shutting down our payment account because their fraud detection system said that our revenue development was a fraud. <laughs> However, we were no fraud, we were just exploding. And we had to prove that by putting together cash flow statements in a night shift and sending them back to PayPal. Now, why did that all work out so well? Nowadays, people are using I can speak to speak to everybody everywhere, even to aliens. I think mainly for four main reasons. Number one, the idea is very simple. You point to your shirt and you get what you need. Second, it's global. Icons is not a language that is verbal, it's visual, so it has no boundaries. Third, it is still kind of genius, even if it is something <laughs> as simple as a t-shirt, right? It's a product that creates this aha effect and this reaction of, why did not I come up with this? <laughs> and lastly, it's fun, right? Design legend Donald Norman once said, don't make something unless it is both necessary and useful. If it is necessary and useful, don't hesitate to make it beautiful. I, as a design amateur, I would like to add to this, don't hesitate to make it fun. If a product is fun and causes people to laugh when they use it the first time in interaction with a stranger, that certainly helps with a positive user experience. That's why our toilet icon is not a man and a woman standing next to each other. It's somebody actually conducting business. <laughs> Simply because it's more fun. 
And you can trust me that this is the icon most used among them all. <laughs> now, you might think that hmm, this is quite impressive what the guys achieved in such a short time, and quite frankly, I hope you do. And you might even think that this is like a well-executed plan and strategy, but I'm not here to tell you a success story. And what you just saw, not much of this is the result of a plan or well-executed strategy. No, we just did it. Before starting I Can Speak, we of course shared the idea with many family, friends and fools, and everybody would just shake their head at it and say things like, why the hell would you start another t-shirt thing? There are as many t-shirts out there as there are grains of sand on Earth. Or quite frankly, that this would have zero potential. But for us, those comments were not really relevant, because we never thought about potentials. Instead of thinking about potentials, we thought about risk minimization. We knew that we could set up the business with very little risk involved. The whole setup cost for this was about 300 to 400 Swiss francs for each of us. With that money, we mostly engaged in testing of textiles and designs. 300 to 400 Swiss francs, even as a student, that is no risk. And if something has no risk, it takes no courage to execute it. So what's your excuse for not doing it? Hence, for us, it was all about trying an idea with minimal risk to try something in which nobody really believed. Having ideas in which nobody really believes was nothing strange to me. Since I was little, I was always full of ideas. And as I grew up with a down-to-earth engineer as my older brother, I was quick to learn that many of my ideas were kind of silly, like a wheelchair I once tried to build out of a used pair of roller skates. But I was also quick to learn that even if 99% of all my ideas are silly, I would just have to have 100 ideas per day to have one good idea every single day. Right? And with that one good idea per day, instead of focusing on its potential, focus on having a go at it with smart risk minimization. Being an entrepreneur and as a startup company, you always have to show potentials permanently. And quite frankly, you always lie. Because you best guess into the blue, into an area with so many unknown variables that you just cannot know what is your potential. But if you can try something with almost no risk involved, why would you care about its potential? Just do it. If you can try something that has no risk, the worst thing that can happen is that you learn something on the way. So let me get back to my introductory question. What is your potential? I don't care. <laughs> and neither should you. All you should care about is purpose and having enough ideas per day. Thank you very much. <laughs>